Steel ball forms on a platform from tower to a ground below. You build the tower, you drop the ball, or you drop the yourself. You know how this thing works because you did it. Over a very tall height though, 192 meters. You can imagine how tall that is. Very, 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 very tall. You may not even see the ground. The ball falls from rest. Oh, this one is my underliner. I should underline already. Need to underline because fall from rest tells me you drop la. No external force. Initial velocity is zero. 192 mass is here. Okay, this is a vertical displacement. So let's write it up. Calculate the time taken for ball to fall. Cannot take stop much and time, so you have to use your stool valve to calculate. Hmm. Sure. If it's an experiment, you can take stop much and time. La. <laughs> but now we want to do some calculations. So what do you have? You have a stool valve variables. You can see what you have and use the equation. Distance 192, only vertical, right? Ah, yeah, no horizontal, vertical, very good. Time, we don't know. Initial velocity, zero. Uh, final velocity, don't know, don't care. Never mind. Acceleration, yes, we know. Why the ball come down? Oh, because got gravitational force. Uh, Mg, pulling it down. This one, cause an acceleration of 9.81. Why acceleration? Because of force. Okay, I think we know what we want to use already. So we need to use... S equals to ut plus half a t squared. This is going to be 192. U is zero. Ah, yeah. Right la, right la. Half a t squared. You should get a t of about 6.26. .6. Or you could round it off to 6.3. Also can. This one, final mark. One mark. If you sub into your stuva or kinematics equation, Correct values, that's another mark. So from that day, the experiment, right, you all tested actually this test the relationship between S and T square. 3SF can, you can put 3SF. You know how to tell whether to put 3, 3 or 2SF or not? Here, 2, wait, why so thick one? Okay, 2 to 3SF is okay. There's a general rule of thumb in structure question that your final answer follow your calculated value. So your final answer, I mean calculated value, this one is 3SF. This one is 3SF, so you can do 3SF, 2SF, 10. La. Actually, 3SF looks better. Ho. Okay, la, okay, la, we keep 3SF. Just in case, have to use for later. Can. 6.26 can, 6.3 can. This is a 3SF. Maybe I should do 3SF, yes. Because you see here, this one also 3 leh. It's also three leh. So my calculated value better follow just in case. Yeah, so both of the answers. Okay, can. Next, maximum KE. Mm, when you're very high up, you have a lot of potential energy. Potential to do what? Potential to, to start moving. La. So do you jump off or you throw something, that object will start to speed up. So this is conservation of energy. Maximum kinetic energy. Assume no energy loss or then all your GPE will become KE. Change in GPE become change in KE. So you can use it as your mg delta h half m delta v squared. That's how you can write it. Lah. So we want to find maximum KE. Right? So no, you no need to write this out. Lah. We just write here. Okay, I think energy is mg delta h. Plug in all the value. This will give you 0 0.20. 9.81 and that very tall tower you drop down 192 this should get 509 joule so you can write 509 here all 3sf right okay now we better stick to 3sf since we use 3sf to calculate we better stick with 3sf same method in paper 3 as well when they ask you to justify the sf so this is one method the equate energy. Adrian, use another method. Calculate final velocity and kinetic energy. Ah, can. So, this is method number two. You use V equals to Shona, U square A. I think UAT enough. UAT to find, it should be around 61.4 meter per second. Then you sub in half mv square. Can. This method also can. Ding. Your method mark will come from your Stuva equation to get some velocity. So yes, can.
No air resistance. Well, no air resistance, we can use stuva, can use energy, also can. Later, second part of the question, got air resistance already. Okay, I'm going to keep this in view. State and explain the variation of velocity as the ball falls to the ground. Well, we say there's a force pulling it, right? When you throw something off a very tall tower, it gets faster and faster. That is called acceleration because of gravity. So this acceleration due to gravity is going to cause the ball's velocity to increase. So we need to state what is the variation? Ah, variation of velocity is our title here. What is the variation? And why do we say that? So we say velocity increase or velocity will increase. But actually, you must also mention increase how? Increase got many type of increase, you know. You have uh, a linear increase. You have an increasing at increasing rate. Increasing at decreasing rate. All different, different one. No? So I think, uh, wait, 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 wait. If this is a, is a velocity graph, is acceleration constant? Thing I see. Mm, assume no, no air resistance. Yes, this is 9.81. Constant. So velocity will increase at a oh, yo, 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 constant rate. Because don't forget, the gradient is acceleration. Gradient constant or should be straight line, uh, increasing up. So velocity increase at constant rates. Practice describing that when uh, kinematics are uh, increased at what rate? Increasing rate, decreasing rate, constant rate. This refers to acceleration. Okay, then you must say why? Why constant? Oh, we just talked about the acceleration. Also oh, because, uh, because acceleration, which is 9.81 meters per second, is constant. Due to, you can talk about some more, due to constant uh, resultant force, no more space idea right there, net force, sum of force. Can you say increasing linearly? Can lah. We like to use constant rate. Lah. Okay, so okay, okay, where to? So this one is very general. Like if you say velocity increase because acceleration constant or force constant. It's only one mark. Lah, so this one is one. They are right somewhere. Oh, yes. Thanks for catching that. This is SMS negative 2. Can you use directly proportional? Uh, velocity increasing proportional to T. Can. Based on the equation V equals to U plus A T. Ma. Can you say absent A resistance? Cannot. They already tell you. Here. Uh, assume air resistance negligible. So we already assume, okay, air resistance negligible for this part A. All negligible. I mean, you can, constant force already assumes no air resistance. Constant force means only weight, though. Weight constant, right? You know, so no, no, no air resistance. You can use direct proportional uh, other things, considerate. Yeah. Usually they will give like two, three marks. Or maybe that's the next part. Oh, yeah, that's the next part. This one we just velocity increase because acceleration constant. Notice the pattern. Ah. Why velocity? Oh, yo, yo, wrong color. Why velocity increase? Because acceleration constant. Why acceleration constant? Because constant force. So it's a why, because, why, because, how to explain things. Because we scared. Not enough marks, so I write everything more. Okay, and last one uh, for this part. Show the velocity is roughly 60. Some of you in earlier part already used Stuva to get 60, so you just write again uh, while you're working. The few ways to do this, one way is to use energy again. Uh, gravitational potential energy, change of it. It goes to the change in half mv square. Can simplify this down to oh, m and m can cancel out. G H equals to half V square. Sub in all the values, 9.81. So it's what, 192? Half 
find V, you should get V of roughly 61.4 meter per second. Some of you already mentioned, Miss, can use other method? Yep. You can use your stuva, no? V equals to U plus AT. Or you want to V square, U square, 2AS. Can also. But it's only one mark if you show you're working and get this, lah, whatever equation you use. Okay, remember, uh, this is velocity of the ball reaching the ground. So this is called final velocity already. V. No questions on this part so far? Okay, you mark your work lah here and there. If there's anything you want to add, any mistakes you caught. Oh, I didn't know this. Oh no, this one is new to me. Oh, I forgot this one. Make a note to self. All right, last part of this question is where things get a little bit strange. Should I round it off? I mean, I show this is understandable that it's roundable to 60. You could write one more line though. 60 proven. Okay, so we can round that off to this end. All right, that's this part. Next part, next part. So there's two cases. Lah. You drop the ball, no, no air resistance, you assume it should go down, follow all your stuva kinematics. But if there's air resistance, you cannot use your stuva anymore. They're all kind of broken because acceleration is not constant. Only can do all this calculation if acceleration is constant. That's why they gave us a graph for part two. In real life, in Minecraft, got air resistance or not, I don't know. You go and do experiment, like you know how to do already, okay? Air resistance is not negligible. The variation of air resistance with velocity is shown. So you see this one, okay, what is this graph about? Air resistance is here. Velocity is here. So it tells me the faster I, I fly through the air, the bigger my air resistance will be. You see, I fly at 100, wow, air resistance is very big. Next time you go and try, if, if you ever get to sit in the car on the highway in the next few weeks, stick your hand out the window and feel the wind. Don't break your arm, okay? Because you'll push your arm back. So that's what it means by if you're moving fast, air resistance is slamming into you. That's dangerous. I know, I know. Don't stick your whole arm. Okay, stick your hand out a bit. Feel the wind hitting your arm. That's air resistance. Use bigger this figure to explain the ver uh, explain the variation of ball. Now we explain the variation of acceleration by using the graph. So you think of acceleration now. State what is the acceleration? Uh, what, how is acceleration changing? And why do you say that? What? Why? What's your answer and why? Okay, we need to draw a diagram now. Acceleration. Beginning. Due to gravity, only gravity. So that is uh, our established 9.81. Ah. Acceleration due to gravity, 9.81. But as you see here, as you get faster and faster, your, you have mg, yes, but another force joined already. This is our drag force. In this case, it's called r. Lah, so we put r. Depending on how fast you move, it will increase. So this is increasing. Okay, um, how does that affect acceleration though? You see they're both force fighting each other, right? So acceleration is getting smaller and smaller. Decrease, less than 9.81. That's what we want to ex explain now. So we say acceleration will decrease, oh? Acceleration decreases. Go to zero or not? Don't know, we never say, oh. We will find out in the later part of the question, but decreases is the main thing. Um, but why decrease? Eh? Uh, because we must explain how, what is acceleration? What affects acceleration? Resultant force or force affect acceleration. So because as R increases, this force increases with velocity, means you move faster, then your drag force bigger. That's what this means. Lah. You move faster, your drag force bigger. As R increases velocity, so what happens to your resultant force? 
resultant force, which is mg minus r, come in right here, resultant force, mg is bigger, minus the r that's getting bigger and bigger, resultant force decreases. This one is mg minus r. I think this is the compact version of the explanation. You say decrease, that's one. You say what happened to R? And then based on the graph, R increase when velocity increase. This is one. Okay, the graph here, velocity faster, drag force faster. And how does that affect acceleration or oh, resultant force decrease? This one is the last one. Okay, I'll write one more explanation. Resultant force is mg minus r. How is that related to acceleration? Ma. Okay, so this one three points. Look somewhere whether you find it or not. If you're not sure or whether you write got mark or not, you, you draw question mark, mark, question mark. Then when you scan and I look through, I can give you some comments on it. The speed of the ball reaches 40. Calculate acceleration. Can you stuva or not? No, 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 no. Acceleration is changing. We just said it's decreasing. Throughout the whole journey, it's decreasing. We cannot use stuva. Because you can only use stuva when acceleration is constant throughout the journey. So we have to, uh, how to do? Uh? Still, the ball is this. Why did they give us this? Is this V or U? I don't know. But we know it's V. Lah. Um, maybe it's helpful to draw a diagram first. So at some point, you are flying down at 40 meter per second. Quite fast, uh. hit the floor can die one, uh. 40 meter per second, break your legs at least. Uh, there is mg downwards. There is our resistive force, which we don't know really how much is it. But I think we can use 40 to find this r. So let's go and see. At 40 meter per second, what is the R? So we need to do the graph thing. Now. 40 is here. So your R should be about 0 0.9876. 0 0.6. When you're traveling at 40, that's the resistive force. 0 0.6. So here is, let's wrap off. 0 0.6 Newton. Very nice. So we can find acceleration. Yay. Net force equals to MA. Who's the net force? Who's acting on the ball? MG. Hmm. We want to define direction, right? If you are accelerating down, I'm going to take this as positive for convenience. So all the force pointing down, I put positive. Okay, so MG. Hmm. R is pointing up, opposing. So minus R equals to MA. Plug in everything we know. So the mass 0 0.270 kg, 9.81. Hey, they give in grams, huh? remember to convert to kg. It's in kg. 9.81, okay. Minus 0 0.6. What did I just write here? 0 0.6. Uh, equals to 0 0.270 times acceleration. Your final acceleration, you should get 7.5. 777, somewhere there. Final answer, you can write 7.59, 7.6, also can. Lah. So here's one mark. The other one comes if you sub, uh, sorry, if you read, where's the reading? 0 0.6. Ah. Somewhere in your working got 0 0.6, that's one mark. Unfortunately, this one they didn't give for Newton's second law. Lah. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So slowly look through. This is the only way to calculate our curse force acceleration. Check. Okay, last part. Can you use drawing a tangent method? What would you find from the tangent? You mean at 40, yeah? What is the tangent though? What does it represent? Hmm. I mean, if it's velocity against time, then can. Lah. If it's a graph of blah, blah, 
if it is a graph of velocity against time and they ask you to find acceleration and your graph looks like this yes at this velocity what is the acceleration you draw tangent Ayo, why why my tangent like that one tangent because this tangent is related to acceleration but this graph is r against v so if i draw a tangent here this is dr dv nani what do i use this for so it's done a bit strange like uh don't know what to do with this uh, dr dv this doesn't help me achieve my acceleration but if it's vt graph yes draw your tangent they sometimes do ask you to do that okay that's this part uh final one okay let's do a final one here okay this top one in use info to state and explain whether the ball reached terminal velocity or not how we know uh, whether it reached terminal velocity or not state and explain terminal velocity means what uh? it means that whatever your weight is it is now perfectly cancelled out by the drag force or the resistive force air resistance so now in this case net force is zero acceleration is zero hence velocity is constant also known as terminal velocity so hmm how do i explain okay this one you need to think 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 a bit here's one way to do it some of you may use slightly different methods uh you can let me know in the chat as i go go along so in order for terminal velocity to happen r must equal to mg oh. so let me write that out here first at terminal velocity if we ever reach it your uh gravitational weight equals to the drag force this we already calculated to be hmm, have we calculated not yet war what is mg uh, omg we have to calculate this is 0 0.27 times 9.81 press calculator i think it's 2.6 last i checked yeah 2.64 can 2.6 roughly roughly okay so if this one must be 2.6 means the resistive force also 2.6 okay so we just write it okay like at terminal velocity it should be this lah if you didn't write the value, it's okay. So the very first mark says, if you mention somewhere that at terminal velocity, this is true. Weight equals to drag force. This is the first mark. Ding. So you scan, scan your paper anywhere. Okay, so that's what happens. But we are not there yet. We need to conclude. So how fast should the object be moving? Well, this method, uh, this is called the, I test the velocity. So I compare velocity. You may compare the force also. So at terminal velocity, object needs to move at roughly 2.6 is where. So if I want to compare the velocity, 2.6 is somewhere here. So if it's at terminal velocity, it should be moving at about 81.5. 82. 80 plus, uh, somewhere around 80. Around 80 meter per second. But what is the ball's final velocity? We just calculated it previously on, you check your paper, part 3, the previous section, 60 meter per second, when it hit the floor. So when it hit the floor, 60 meter per second, much lesser. Right? So object needs to move at around 80 meters per second, but at ground, object is only around 60 meter per second. Hence, not terminal velocity, no more space already. So first one is you talk about condition for terminal. The second one is your method of explanation. Here I compare the velocity. 
what should be the terminal and what you are currently. So that's the second mark. Okay, what other methods do you have for comparing? So this is the compare velocity method. Let's see. At maximum speed, R is 1.35, not big enough to cancel weight. Yep, that's another method. So method number two is you compare forces. So currently at, where is it, 60, per, 60 meter per second, your R is 1.35 only. Le. Not big enough. You need to go until 2.6, which is weight. So R is 1.35, which is less than weight. I shortcut a bit here. Like you write a whole sentence. Can you can say that? So they so hence the ball does not reach terminal velocity. Okay, other methods. Acceleration at the ground is 4.81. Ah, yes, you can mention that. So you do some if you do some calculation, you show that acceleration is not zero. Hence, not terminal. Can. So Adrian, your method also can. These are different ways to conclude the 